Hey friends and family, this is SP News Nuggets, and today you guys, we've got another story. Yes, we got another story that happened on Christmas Day. This is down there in the Tennessee area. It's still down south, you guys. So we're going to share with you some of the report, and we're going to wait for some clips to come in. But until then, let me share with you what I got, and we're going to talk about it. Here we go. Okay, you guys. This is Sherelle Million. She is um, from Memphis, Tennessee. It says a Mid-South woman was arrested after police say she opened fire on her husband and his reported girlfriend on Christmas Day. According to police officers, they were called to a Southwest Memphis home on Hawkeye Street and located a male shooting victim. Another woman who told police she was the male victim's girlfriend was also inside the house at the time. When questioned by authorities, the man stated the pair were inside the home when his wife, Sherelle Million, came in and fired at least six shots at both of them. He was shot in the arm before Sherelle Million took off. The alleged shooter turned herself in a short time later and was charged with aggravated assault, domestic violence, and aggravated assault. Okay, family, we're going to talk about the situation a little bit because she's got posts everywhere, so I'm going to share with you some of her posts. We're going to be talking about mental illness. We're going to talk about failure relationships and how depression can set in, especially around the holidays, because this is a really good example that this lady was needing some help. So I'm going to start sharing some posts with you that she has up during this last six months before this actually happened. And then um, we'll talk about it Friday at 5 p.m. We're going to talk about mental health. We're going to talk about depression. We're going to talk about bro brokenness. Somebody when they ain't treating you right and people always be like but no you gonna just leave them when they have their worth and what about me what about me there's so many it's too much sympathy about the person being left for doing bullshit than the person that had to endure the bullshit and make the difficult choice to leave that person you think it was easy packing my shit and leaving you think it was easy blocking numbers you think it was easy standing up for myself you think it was easy looking into the eyes of somebody that told me they love me and know that they lying through their teeth? You think it was easy to accept that shit? But yet you got more sympathy for that person that was putting me through bullshit talking about, well, I hope he gonna be alright. I hope she gonna be alright. Man, fuck that, man. Hope I'm gonna be alright. If you, my friend, ask about me, don't be worrying about how they doing. They're the person that made the willful choice to do bullshit knowing that there was a good-ass possibility I was going to leave. Period. I set my boundaries in the beginning. Cheating was non-negotiable. Putting your hands on me was non-negotiable. Taking me for granted was non-negotiable. And that person knew it and made the conscious choice to do it anyway because they took me for granted. You thought me saying I love you meant you can take me for granted. Treat me like I was ordinary, like I was a convenience, like you can turn me on and off. No. So I made the difficult situation decision to leave. I'm the person you need to worry about if I'm all right. Asking if I need something. 
I need to have, listen, it's too much sympathy for the people doing bullshit and not enough for the people enduring it. You making guilt tripping people for leaving when they in a fucked up situation because in your mind, you think everybody should make something work? How about you? How, no, matter of fact, how about you make it work with that person then? How about you enduring it day in and day out bullshit and anger issues and cheating? How about you do that shit? It's so easy for you to tell me, man, you got to go and endure it. You know, y'all got y'all to gotta work it out. Y'all love each other. No, no, no. I loved who that person was, not what they became. And my life is too short to be waiting on somebody to get their shit together. Period. God didn't put me on the earth for this. All right? He wanted me to be happy. So all I'm saying is, if you are concerned about somebody other than the person that was doing bullshit that had the strength to leave, then your priorities is fucked up. There'd be friends out here that, you know, but he, I mean, he really loves you, but he was putting his hands on you. He was cheating on you. And they would want you to work that out with that person? No. No. Anybody out there that got the courage to leave the fucked up situation, you got my sympathy. You got my support. And I'm chiefly concerned about you. Fuck that person that fucked up. They gonna get help from God, Jesus, they mama, but not from, not me. from me. I'm gonna help you through it because I know you need the support. I know you need to listen to ear. I know you need a shoulder to cry on. Because guess what? I've been there. I, have, I done had to leave somebody and that shit tore me apart. It tore me apart. So I know how it feels. So, yeah, I get people that get left and got shit that they got to work on. I get it. I, it's it's an easy person to be like, get your sympathy to. But don't forget about the people that had to endure the shit. Those per other imperfected people with flaws that were detrimental to relationships put them through. They have my support. Check on your peoples, B. Check on your peoples. Even if that girl's acting super confident, like everything is all right, and she's feeling lighter after that breakup, still make sure she all right. Because it takes courage to walk away from somebody you once loved if you know that they ain't the person that's right for you. It takes a strong person, and it's too many people to never do it. All those relationships you talk about, those 50, 60-year marriages with people, Man, people enduring. It's a lot of people from the older generations that's enduring because they have to. Not because they're still in love with that person. Not because they care about that person. It's because it's easier to stay together. I don't want that shit. I don't want 60 years of just being married to a person's body. If you can't give me your mind, your spirit, and your heart at the same time for the rest of our lives, then I don't want that shit. And I will leave you if you disrespect me on a consistent basis and you act like I'm just a regular ass person when I'm not. And you break those fundamental guidelines and, and boundaries and lines we set that we would never break. I will leave your ass. And anybody that got sympathy for the people that I'm leaving because you think that they're hurt, ask about me. You ain't my friend. Because I'm hurt too. It hurt me to have to leave. But anyway, that's the end of my rant. Because I'm getting sick of people caring more about the people doing bullshit than a person that had to endure it and walk away. You got my sympathy. If you ever had to walk away from somebody, you got my heart. You got my support. Because I know how difficult that is. All right? So if you ever had to walk away from somebody, put the walk emoji. This is my second video today, so I know y'all already got it up. Put the walk emoji. And it's hot as fuck. And that's how you know I love y'all. Because I could be in my air conditioner right now, but I got my spirit got inspired. So I made this video.